What's up guys, Damoner1212 and, two and, two, and it's list day! Ah yes, list day, and today we're gonna be looking at the top 10 best cards in Abyss Rising. This series has taken us a while to get through, there is just so many main sets in this game that have come out over the years, but we're finally getting to some of the main sets that I have actually experienced uh, after taking my long hiatus from the original uh, DM era of the game. It's been a long road getting from there to here. But I can safely say I'm starting to actually know what some of these cards are. We're getting very close to the point where I actually came back. And Abyss Rising is a cool set because it's all water monsters. And we all know that I like them blue boys. So without further ado, let's get started. Number 10 is Forbidden Dress, a quick play spell card. Target one face-up monster on the field. Until the end of this turn, that monster loses 600 attack, but it cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects. Ooh! Forbidden Dress is one of the forbidden spell cards, obviously. And given that it is a quick play spell card, it ends up being a pretty versatile effect. Being that it includes an attack modulation means you can use it during the damage step, which limits your opponent's ability to chain to it. it doesn't say that it's your monster or your opponent's monster specifically, so it's anything that you want on the field, as long as it's face up, and offers some targeted and destructive protection to the monster you use it on. All of these combined make an extremely versatile card that you can use offensively, defensively, or somewhere in between. I really like this one. Uh, it's kind of underrated because uh, I think Lance gets a lot of attention and now Droplet, but I love dresses. <laughs> Probably. But remember Kings, don't let a $10 sundress make you busy for the next 18 years. <laughs> <laughs> Advice to dual buy. Number 9 is, number 9, Dyson Sphere. I'm not exactly sure what the Dyson Sphere is in this. Is it this? Is that the Dyson Sphere? A Dyson Sphere. Basically, a Dyson Sphere is a, a giant theoretical structure where if you, you like, encompass a star, it's so you can, like, use the star as a reactor uh, and, and harness its energy, but that means we'd have to build a giant uh, spherical structure larger than a star. That's what this card supposedly is. I don't know what the flower motif going on around that is, but, uh, sure. Rank 9 XC, uh, I think this is actually the first Rank 9, which is, which is fun, I suppose. Uh, but being a light machine would make you wish it was a Rank 10, I... I but 2800 attack, 3k defense. What do? Two level nine. Woot, generic. Once per battle step during your opponent's turn, if this card with exceed material is attacked, negate the attack. Doesn't use material to do this. That's fun. When this card is targeted for an attack, while it has no exceed material on it, you can target two monsters in your graveyard, attach them to this card as material. Neat, replenish itself, that's fun. During your main phase, you can detach one XC material from this card. This card can attack your opponent's life points directly this turn. But your opponent must control a monster with a higher attack than this thing's attack to activate and resolve this effect. That sounds a bit clunky. Uh, obviously, the, the battle protection that can replenish its own material is pretty neat. It means it's pretty hard to get off the field via battle. However, I feel like the obvious function for this card is it's probably some cheesy FTK because it's a big beat stick you can summon from your extra deck that can attack directly and throwing a kaiju at your opponent would be a pretty simple way of, of getting this thing live. I'd like to know what the FTK play lines for this one are because I would 100% totally understand it and commit it to memory and enjoy playing that kind of thing because that's the kind of duelist I am. I really like the card art though. It's, it's pretty cool. Number eight is Memory of an Adversary. Normal truck car. Let's go. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can take damage equal to that monster's attack, and if you do, banish that monster. During the end phase of your opponent's next turn, special summon that monster to your side of the field. Memory of an Adversary is actually kind of a neat battle trap. Kind of reminds you of D-Prison, especially with its effect being almost identical, with the added benefit of actually stealing the opponent's monster, albeit a couple turns later. Would you play this over D-Prison? Uh... Well, I mean, Memory of an Adversary does require you to take some damage, which is a bit counterintuitive when it comes to battle traps. However, uh, doesn't target, unlike Dimensional Prison, so, uh, that's actually novel. That's kind of fun. And the fact that it, like, special summons the monster to your side of the field, like, a couple turns later, that's not bad. I mean, that's, that's kind of cute, especially if you steal something like some big, untargetable boss monster that, uh, they didn't see this kind of thing coming and you steal that. You could play this in Duel Links. I have no idea if it's in the game or not, but it would let you get Destiny Draw off. That's... <laughs> 
thing, I suppose. <laughs> Overall, I think this is a pretty underrated uh, battle trap, actually. I kind of like this card. And uh, being a normal trap, you can trap trick it. Neat. I just think they're neat. Hmm. I like this. Number seven is Mullen Glacia, the Elemental Lord. Level eight, Water Sea Serpent, 2800 attack, 2200 defense. Just like Grand Solar from the set before, the way these Elemental Lords work is if you got five of a, of a, what is it, an attribute in your graveyard, you can just kind of slap this thing down. In this case, water. They can't normal summon it, slap it down when you got five waters in your grave, five exactly. And if you do manage to special summon the thing, it discards two random cards from your opponent's hand. One if they only have one. If it leaves the field though, you gotta skip your next battle phase. <laughs> Don't let the Mermail player cheat. Well, why are you boring me? I'm right. Being that that's an OTK strategy, it probably won't ever come up, but if they don't kill you this turn, they can't kill you next turn. Obviously, uh, knocking two cards out of your opponent's hand is uh, really strong. And Mermail Playlines just kind of make this thing along the way with, uh, with Dragoon. So it's an extremely powerful one-off in that strategy. Matter of fact, that strategy actually comes out in this set, as we will see later. Overall, pretty nasty card. Number six is Spellbook of Fate. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just good card after good card. This set is just another very, very good set. Spellbook of Fate is a quick play spell card of the Spellbook archetype. This set gave us like all the rest of the spellbooks except Judgment, as well as a couple more Prophecy cards. So, you know, woot, that strategy is mostly finished. And this came in a pretty sexy ulti. So, uh, man, Spellbooks at max rarity, is a it, that's a pretty deck. If you control a Spellcaster type monster, you can banish up to three Spellbook spell cards from your graveyard and apply one of these three effects according to the number of spell cards you banished. If you banish one, you can return one set spell or trap on the field to the hand of the player. Not too bad if you're trying to OTK and deal with some back row you don't know what it is. Two. Change one monster in the field to face down defense position or face up attack position. Either one of those is actually pretty applicable. Maybe you're book of mooning a monster to turn its effect off or put it in its weaker position, which is defense, or you're using it to flip up your own blue boy and get an extra search. It happens. Or three, banish one card your opponent controls. That doesn't target. Whew. Yeah. Oh boy. Spellbook of Fate is a fantastic, versatile, quick play spell card that even saw some, some time on the Forbidden Limited list because of just how good it was. Arguably the second best spellbook card there is. The deck is just really strong. Not only does Judgment give you tons of advantage, Spellbook of Fate gives you something to do with that advantage. And because the deck is almost entirely spell cards, you're using spell cards to get to your other spell cards, so filling up your grave in order to proc any three of these effects that you want is, is it's practically a non-issue. The deck is an absolute riot to play, and I wonder if it actually kind of informed the, the creation of Sky Strikers, a deck mostly, again, revolving around uh, spell cards. Because the play styles is not dissimilar. I love this deck, I, if you can't tell. Number five is Bahamut Shark. Bahamut Shark is a rank four water sea serpent monster. 2600 attack and, oh boy, 2100 defense. I You never put in defense mode. <laughs> Made of two level four water monsters. So not very generic, but not not super ungeneric. There's definitely a water theme in this set. Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card to special summon one rank three or lower water XC monster from your extra deck. This card might as well say once per turn, detach a material to summon totally awesome. That's a that's the best target by a country mile. Letting weird decks like heroes and mermails make a XC monster they have no business creating. <laughs> But you can also go into Nightmare Shark or something like that, which is probably the intended target for the card. And overall, it's just a fun tool for the water decks to use. Side note, I think it's pretty funny that Master Rule 4 absolutely crippled the card, <laughs> but <laughs> it is, it's, it's back to full power again, so feels good, man. What's up guys, David are one, two, one, two, and it's number four. Ah yes, number four, the one that I forgot to record initially and I had to come back and do it. Oh God, am I pissed off at myself. <laughs> ah! Damn it, the whole video is ruined. It's not gonna look the same as the rest of the thing. <laughs> number four is Abyss Megalo. The big, dumb beater, fucking mermails I don't even give a shit about. <laughs> What does this f***ing thing do? Level 7 Water Sea Serpent Monster, 2400 attack, and some f***ing defense. 19. <laughs> you can discard. 
You know what's the weirdest thing is that, like, if I ever do this to myself, it's always number four. I don't know what it is. It's like I get to five and I'm like, I'm halfway done. Woo! And then I'm like, number three. And now I'm now I'm here. You can discard two other water monsters from your hand. Special summon this thing to the field. You know, like a good boss monster should. When you summon this thing this way, you can add a uh, abyss spell or trap from your deck to your hand. You're probably getting one of the three abyss scale equip spells. Probably Kraken. Kraken's the monster one. What's cool about those equip spells is they don't start a chain when they go to negate a thing. Upon effect resolution, they just send themselves to the graveyard to negate the effect. And because it does not start a chain, it, it's actually kind of hard to stop them. I think your I think your trade off though is that you can't choose when you use it. Also, Abyss Megalo has another effect. To contribute one other attack position monster, this thing can attack twice this turn. During each battle phase, if you could somehow get two, you could attack four times, I guess. So what, uh, what, what, what does Mermel want to do with this thing? Well, it's basically the win con of the deck. You make this and you punch a couple times and win. I'm so mad that I'm standing here right now. Pretty sure the summon effect will, uh, will trigger your, your Atlanteans though, so that's kind of cute. I think it's really funny that Mermel came out in this set almost as an entire unit, and it's just like a out of the gate functioning deck. That's that's nice to see. You know what I mean? Number three, Gagaga Cowboy, rank four Earth Warrior XE monster with 1500 attack and 2400 defense. That one I did by memory. Well, howdy, Pilgrim. What do you suppose this card does? Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card and apply one of the following effects depending on the battle position this card is in. If this card is in attack position and this card attacks an opponent's monster this turn, this card gains 1,000 attack and the opponent's monster loses 500 attack. Basically, raising this thing to 2,500 attack and lowering your opponent's monster by 500, putting the damage cap to uh, a 3k beat stick on your opponent's side of the field for them both to kill each other. Gaga Ga Cowboy coming in hot as a generic rank 4 that is fulfilling a role that rank 4 XE monsters didn't really have up at this point as a generic, and that is getting over a 3k beater. <laughs> Still not perfect, because it kills itself, but uh, at least you can play it in other rank 4 decks that aren't just warriors like uh, Excalibur could last set. But no one gives a crap about that effect, we all care about that second one though. If this thing is in defense position, Detaching a material from this card inflicts 800 damage to your opponent. Now that might not sound like a humongous amount of damage, it's under a thousand, but if it's main phase two and your opponent just smacked into your face with a bunch of his monsters, and you now have 800 or less life points left, you better believe... It's high noon. Gaga Ga Cowboy might be the one card solely responsible for more game wins than any other card in the game. He single-handedly has ended so many games that we now have the term Cowboy for Game. And even in Duel Links, where uh, we don't have a main phase 2 and they have the amount of damage he can do, you still see people using him this way, even though his first effect is a little more applicable in that game, because sometimes it's just easier to hit him for the burn than risk a battle phase. And in the modern era, nothing feels quite as bad as like your opponent having like 500 life points and you're like, crap, but I was running cowboy. All right, so what Xe monster in this set could possibly be better than Cowboy? I mean, he just wins games, right? Well, it's uh, the Dolce Queen Tiramisu. Tiramisu is not generic. This rank four Earth Fairy monster with 2200 attack and 2100 defense is made of two level four Medolce monsters, so it's completely landlocked to its own deck. However, as I said last video, and uh, it's weird that I've now referenced two cards from this set in the last video. It's, it's actually, I didn't realize that both of the cards I was gonna talk about and <laughs> were just in the next set. Weird. Is that uh, Madolce Tiaramisu is one of the best removal rank fours we have in the game. Why is that? Once per turn, detach one XE material from this card, target up to two Madolce cards in your graveyard, shuffle those two into your deck, and after that, love that problem solving card text, Shuffle cards your opponent controls into their deck up to the number of Medolce cards you shuffled. Whew. That all happens on resolution, so you do not target when you activate this card. You only target the stuff in your graveyard, not the things you intend to shuffle on your opponent's side of the field. So that is non-destruction, non-targeting, multiple removal. <laughs> no offense, but I think it's kind of gross. 
sure, she's not proactive, she's reactive. You make her when your opponent makes a weird thing, but holy crap, is that a powerful material detach. Not only is the removal good, but it's 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 doing your Medulce thing, so it's putting your crap back in your deck, which is actually helping your strategy as well. So Queen puts in work. Gotta love Queen. Gotta love Queen. I know I do. All right, we do have some honorable mentions. The first one is Slushy. I know my Discord put Slushy on here because he's a level two Aqua monster. Thank you. And his effect is is vaguely a combination of Armageddon Knight and and, and Malicious, but uh, does some weird thing with level five or higher Caesar. I don't know. <laughs> you wouldn't put it in frogs, but you could. Thanks guys for that one. But nah, the real honorable mention is Attack the Moon. Wow, they uh they made a card based on one of the more ridiculous season one DM moves Yugi does in Duelist Kingdom when he orders his giant soldier of stone to attack a spell card. What? They figured out a way to make it work. It's a continuous spell that says uh, once per turn, when the battle position of a rock type monster changes, you can target one spell trap your opponent controls and destroy it. <laughs> Cause that's what he does. He, he changes it to attack mode and, and attacks the moon. I, I love that this card exists. It's not good. But, uh, oh, is it fun. And our dishonorable mention is the Humble Sentry. Y'all thought Cold Feet was bad? Cold Feet just stops you from playing, like, spells and traps for the rest of the turn, but doesn't just, you know, make you lose the game, per se. The Humble Sentry is worse. It's somehow worse. This normal spell card says, reveal your hand, choose one card from it, shuffle that card on your deck. That is a hard make two, and you are giving information to your opponent for no reason. This card is so <laughs> Yeah, you right. Again, you could use Mystical Ref Panel. The card's a joke. I don't know why these even exist. Somebody thought they were funny. I, I don't know. All right, we do have a sponsor. Today's sponsor is TCG Player. Use my link in the description below if you guys want to go buy some expensive cardboard. Because, I don't know, you're, you're remote dueling or something. I can't wait till we have real events again. Holy crap. And number one, the best card in the set Abyss Rising is Abyss Dweller. Abyss Dweller is the best kind of generic rank four because it gives you a bonus if you make it with its less than generic materials. This rank four water sea serpent monster with 1700 attack and 1400 defense has the following effect. Made of two level four monsters. It's generic. While this card has a material on it that was a water monster, all water monsters you control gain 500 attack. So it's a generic rank four, but you get a little spicy bonus if you make it with water monsters. So uh, I love that, I love that idea. But the effect we really care about is once per turn, it's a quick effect, you can detach one material from this card. Your opponent cannot activate any effects of cards in their graveyard this turn. Hello darkness, my old friend. Abyss Dweller is a fantastic rank 4 C monster because it is a proactive play instead of a reactive play like a lot of the rank 4 toolbox. Having a defensive option that can potentially turn your opponent's graveyard effects off is a fantastic way to shut down particular decks. Some decks just lose to it. Can't activate my Orcists or something, I don't know. Don't cut to the Yuya clip! <laughs> But uh, I do have a love-hate relationship for Dweller here, uh, specifically because it's the perfect out to my tiny turtle. <laughs> Tetsudo Arat Nuin does not allow your opponent to special summon monsters of 1800 or more attack, which normally is their entire extra deck. And the fact that he has 1800 defense means that even if your opponent does summon something smaller than 1800, what good is it going to do? They can't beat over him. Except Dweller. Dweller at 1700 attack can be special summoned, and when it hits the field, if you made it with a water, it boosts above the 1800 defense that my that my tiny turtle has. It's the perfect out to it, and I hate it. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the list. Uh, Abyss Rising is a really good set. I uh, I'm really enjoying this. We this is a fun era of Yugi Mans coming up on my favorite era of Yugi Mans. Looking forward to that. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think and. Uh, if you guys want to get in on the list creating action, uh, link in the description below for my Discord. We also do tournaments there, like, at this point we're doing, like, tournaments every week, frankly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, uh, wonderful fairyland of Yugi Man's 
So be sure to check that out. And remember, guys, if you don't troll the meta, who will? I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. The Destiny Board tells me that you should subscribe to the channel, or you can watch some of these other videos. Now excuse me, my Millennium Ring has detected another Millennium Item. Oh, it's... it's just Merrick. Akora, did you remember to get milk? We're out of milk. This milk is bad. It was terrible.